Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications and let's get started. So we do have a quarter circle with radius A and a circle with radius B and they're both inscribed in a unit semicircle which means that we have a semicircle with radius 1 and we also have that the quarter circle passes through the center of the semicircle. So Basically, this point here is the center of our semicircle with radius 1, okay? And we're supposed to find A and B. All right, cool. So since it's easier to find A, we're going to find that first. I'm going to go ahead and make an important connection. As you know, con connections are important in geometry puzzles. So I'm going to go ahead and start here at this point, And then I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the center of the semicircle, which also happens to be a point on the quarter circle, correct? Okay, cool. Now, one thing we know which is important is that the radius of the semicircle is one. That's why it's called a unit semicircle, which means its radius is equal to one unit, okay? So this is one. And since this is a quarter circle, that segment just happens to be the hypotenuse of a right triangle, which is basically formed by, uh, you know, these segments here, this point, this point, and that point is just going to form that triangle. So we, had, we do have a right triangle here whose hypotenuse is 1. But not just any ordinary right triangle. It is actually an isosceles triangle as well. Okay. So what is that supposed to mean? It means that, well, if this length is x, this is also x. As we know from basic geometry that if you have an isosceles right triangle, its hypotenuse is basically square root of 2 times the legs. Therefore, we can safely say that x times the square root of 2 is equal to 1, giving us x is equal to 1 over square root of 2. If you rationalize the denominator, you're going to get root 2 over 2 for that length. Okay? Now, why is that length important? Because that basically gives us the radius of the quarter circle. So x is basically the same as a in this case. So a is equal to x. Therefore, a is root 2 over 2. Okay, cool. So we found the radius of the quarter circle. We found A, in other words. Now we're going to go ahead and find the radius of the blue circle, which is B. How do you find that? So for that purpose, we're going to make more connections, of course. And those connections are, again, going to be super important. But one thing to notice is that if you connect the centers here, you know that if two circles are tangent, or a circle is tangent to another one, either from outside or inside, doesn't matter, but connecting the centers all, almost always helps. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this connection here, all right? So that, that's going to be important. And as you know, this point is on the semicircle as well as on the quarter circle. So what is that supposed to mean? It means that this is B, and as you know, the radius of the semicircle here is 1. So if you subtract b from it, you're going to get 1 minus b for the length of this piece here. Cool. What else do we know? Well, we can go ahead and drop a perpendicular here, which would make sense because, as you know, the circle is going to be perpendicular basically to the diameter here because it's tangent, right? So that's going to just generate another right triangle here, whose height is b because that would be the radius of the blue circle correct now here's one challenging piece that we need to work out this little piece here we don't know that length but we can find it how well let's call that y and don't ask why okay how do you find y by using the pythagorean theorem now let's go ahead and write down another equation for that one and maybe change the colors here okay cool so we can write y squared plus b squared is equal to 1 minus b quantity squared. Nice. Now, by using this equation, basically, I can get y in terms of b, but is that enough to solve for b? Because we do need another equation, and we're going to do that in the next step. So let's go ahead and solve for y first. Let's subtract b squared from both sides, and then it should give me 1 minus b squared minus b squared. And now we can go ahead and expand it. It should give us 1 minus 2b, or not 2b, you know, I always make that cheap joke, plus b squared minus b squared. Okay, 
So now, what are we going to do next? Well, b squared minus b squared is obviously zero. So that leaves us with the value of y in terms of p, but we need to square with both sides. And since in this case, 2b is supposed to be less than uh, 1, how do we know that? Well, it's just supposed to be that way, okay? Uh, so we can just go ahead and square root both sides. And obviously, if there is this is wrong, then at the end, we should get some complex solutions, right? Because it, you're going to have a quantity that is negative under the radical. Okay, so we were able to get y in terms of p. And remember that y is that little piece there between this point and that point. Cool. Now, how is that helpful, right? You might be asking like, okay, fine. I mean, so what? Uh, you found y, but we need to find b, right? So we do need to make another connection. You see, it's all about connections. I've been telling you all these geometry puzzles, you have to make good connections, right? Same as in real life. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and connect these two points now. Why is that important? Because, first of all, it is connecting the two centers, even though it doesn't look very meaningful here. It is actually very meaningful. Maybe it does look meaningful. Who knows, right? That's just my opinion. But here's the thing. First of all, you're connecting the center. So the segment that connects the two centers basically passes through the points of tangency, which is nice. So I'm talking about this point right here, and then this point right here, and this point right here. So that's like a segment, right? Okay, good. But that also forms a really nice, beautiful shape. And we call that a right triangle. Okay, what can be more beautiful than a right triangle, right? Okay, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and shade it. So that's the next one that I'm going to use. Obviously, that's good because that gives me some information, more information on y and b. But what about x? We already know what x is. x is actually a, and a is equal to root 2 over 2. So we know this length here. This is root 2 over 2. And I know y in terms of b. So this is nice because now I need to worry about the hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse of the shaded triangle. How do you know the hypotenuse? Well, since that segment, which happens to be a hypotenuse, connects the two centers, then its length is equal to the sum of the two segments. Why? Because this point is on the segment and these three points are all collinear, which means they're on the same line. Cool. So we know that this is equal to A, which is root 2 over 2, and this is B, which is B. We don't know what it is yet. We're going to find it. So I know the hypotenuse in terms of B. I know the height in terms of B, and if I know the base, then we are good to go. And we do. Remember, base is root 2 over 2 plus y, because we're talking about this triangle here, right? Okay, let's shade it one more time to make it more clear what we're talking about. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down the Pythagorean theorem for the last time and solve for B. Okay? How do we solve for b? Let's go ahead and write down our equation. So remember, we're going to start with a here, all right? That always does that in the middle of the video, right? Okay, so this is my root 2 over 2 plus y. And you know that y can be written in terms of b, which is square root of 1 minus 2b, or not 2b, right? That is going to be squared, and we're going to add, of course, this sum is going to be squared, right? Oh, man, this is going to be crazy, right? Plus b squared, which is the height, and then that's going to give me the hypotenuse squared. You remember what the hypotenuse is? It is a plus b. But we know that a is equal to root 2 over 2 plus b is unknown. So we're going to write it as root 2 over 2 plus b. There you go. Wow. That's some quadratic equation, right? Well, not at this point, but we're going to make it quadratic. So you can just go ahead and expand this. b squared is going to cancel out. Nice. We're going to get a b term from the right-hand side, but from the left-hand side, we're going to get another b term, also a radical. So this is going to be very, very radical. Let's, if you just expand this a little bit, let me go ahead and do it. So this is 1 over root 2, so it's going to be 1 half, plus when you multiply these two together, obviously 2 is going to disappear because you multiply by 2ab, then it should give me something like root 2 multiplied by this. You know, we could write them under the same radical, it doesn't matter, it's no big deal. This is going to give me 1 minus 2b, or not 2b plus, too much, too much, too many jokes, okay, b squared equals, then this expression is going to be 1 half plus root 2b plus b squared, okay, b squared cancels out, just temporary relief, right, okay, now we have a radical here, so our next thing should be, 
you know, after cleaning this up a little bit, our next goal should be the following. To get rid of the radical. So to get rid of the radical, I would like to take these terms and just throw them away, like on, I mean, not away, but just on the other side, so that we get something like this, root 2b plus 2 times b minus 1. Okay, now, next step would be, obviously, you can go ahead and combine like terms here, root 2 plus 2, whatever, and then square both sides, so that we get rid of the radical, and it's going to be, unfortunately, another quadratic. Okay, cool. So, I'm not going to bore you with the details here because what I'd like to do is just, uh, you know, give you the idea. This is basically how we solve it. First, we find A because it's easier and then not get confused by X, by the way. A is X, same thing. And then finding B is the next step and we found it. Well, at least we got an equation and just I'm going to spare you the trouble and give you the value of B for free. Isn't that cool? Okay, nice. So if you solve this equation, uh -uh, don't do that twice. If you solve this equation, eventually, you're going to be getting the following B value. Ready, set, go. Okay, it's going to be 3 root 2 minus 4 plus 2 times the square root of 10 minus 7 root 2 all over 2. You like that? Okay, that's a mouthful, right? Cool. So this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe and take care. Bye-bye.